many Nigerian universities are currently dealing with a brain drain. And as a result, there is loss of human capital, skills shortages, and gaps in a critical sector of the economy. A number of factors such as poor salary, unconducive working environment, poor staff development, inadequate infrastructural facilities, strike actions, insecurity and inadequate funding seem to be the cause. With many lecturers in the Nigerian universities leaving the nation to pursue professions overseas as the federal government struggles to find a lasting solution to the ongoing crisis in the education sector. Joining me to discuss this are Dr. Ni Sumono, PhD, National President, Congress of University Academics, Konoa, and Professor Samaila Mande, Dean School of Postgraduate Studies, National Open University of Nigeria. Gentlemen, welcome this evening to Plus Politics. Yeah, the I must say that uh, your, the two of you... Good evening, Nigerians. Uh, just to get the introduction very clear, I was the former dean of the School of Postgraduate Studies National Open University of Nigeria. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for the correction. We sure do appreciate that. Uh, at least we uh, are also fortunate to know that you have attained that level of, uh, of leadership within the university system and you are, quite, you are quite competent to speak to the issue at hand. Let me then start with, with you then, Professor Samara Mande. Uh, as somebody who has attained leadership in the academic environment, especially in an ivory tower, what is your take about the now well-reported brain drain in our universities. What is your take, general opinion about that? Well, let me say that um, even though uh, the network wasn't all that clear, but I want to believe that you're now talking about what was my own take about the situation in, uh, based on the theme we're now talking about today. Yes, sir. Uh, there is no doubt about it that uh, the brain drain is a major challenge in our educational development in Nigeria. And as a matter of fact, it's a global issue. And so the most important thing is that we have to look at it. There are factors responsible to this uh, menace and to this issue. There are factors responsible. And so what are these factors that are there? We need to understand that, one, there is this search for opportunities. And then aside from that one, we have this uh, unconducive atmosphere and then poor salary conditions, aside from that, and then we have issues that has to do with, uh, you know, strikes. Because in the academic setting, because when we are talking about uh, uh, this brain drain issue, because I need to let us clear that, yes, it is a phenomenon that is now ravaging various parts of the world, and which in our own uh, lexicon in Nigeria, we call it the Jackman Syndrome. And because it is the Jackma syndrome that we now, that's what we're now facing, clearly we need to understand that the, every individual has his own need. And because you have your own needs and whatever, so you have to understand factors A, be responsible to you wanting to now meet up with your need. But looking at it educationally, we have to understand that there are some factors responsible to that. In this case, we have this idea of unstable academic calendar and we have this issue that has to do with lack of academics and research for support development because every academic if there is anything that makes an academic thriving is his research competence and research support and so a situation whereby there is no support for research so that's why we're having that as a major challenge in our country and then the other issue is the need to have this kind of engagement with the industry because we need to understand that there are some things that are now clear 
which are very, very critical. And we have to try as much as we can to see how we can now resolve that. I talk about those factors now. Okay, thank you. Let, let, let me let, before we go before we go deep into it, uh, your end. At least by the time I uh, invited uh, Doctor Sumonu, uh, especially in your position as a trade union leader of a sort in the academic environment, I know, and I was very glad this morning when we were trying to invite you that you first took permission to work your organs. You said you wanted to check with your, with your organs if you should uh, come on a set like this. And, you know, it, 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 it then speaks to the fact that you are a man who tries to garner the opinions of those that you lead. But from your position as the leader of Konwa, what is your take? on this so-called unfortunate phenomenon of brain drain in our academia. Yeah, thank you very much once again. I, I'll start by appreciating you for extending this invitation to us. Secondly, I think the bigger part of the job has actually been done, um, starting, kicking off by Prof. Professor Mande over there. I will only try to look at it from, I'll be it, a slightly different perspective or try to coalesce the matter into two headings. The first is actually the problem, the general problem of the country. Prof has spoken about the generic nature of the challenge. It's not affecting the academics alone. It's a general thing and it's a global thing. The other perspective is to look at it generally and pin it down to the problem of funding in our tertiary institutions and in the universities in particular. And, you know, sometimes in the past in this country, when universities first started in this country, in the 40s, up till around 1975, just to summarize, we'll see that the influx of expatriates, Britons, Indians, Ghanaians, maybe due to some other problems with respect to Ghanaians. From, uh, from, from, from the Commonwealth, from the English-speaking yeah. world. Thank you, sir. The, 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 these people, you find them in our academia and contributing their quota to the development. And we even find students. The issue of brain drain started showing its head and it actually coincided with when the funding began to reduce in this country and that is post 75. the first um, effect we started saying in the early 80s and it is about funding funding has to do with good remuneration Funding has to do with conducive environment. Funding has to do with the facilities with which researchers will work. That, that is the, that's the joy of researchers. So, as far as we are concerned, um, the major problem responsible for the exodus of Nigerian academics is the reduction in the funding of the universities and quickly before i conclude on this point is for our thinking that the government the funding we get from the government is unpredictable is insufficient is epileptic if there's anything like that so with that and you put your mind to that you expect that to sustain the university no consistency, inconsistent, insufficient, then you can't embark on any meaningful research. And you, if you take this, extend this to all facets of the life in the university, then you have this. Uh, all sort of things, coupled with unpredictability in our academic sessions, in our academic calendar due to strikes. So all these put together contributes 
Okay, let me quickly take to this. the brain drain. Let me quickly take it to, to Prof. Prof, uh, I have worked with you before in, uh, in my capacity as an entrepreneur and shaking academia. Uh, and I know that some people like you in the academic environment are not only sinking your heads into researches and pedagogy or teaching alone, there are strategies that some people like you tend to effect to unshake uh, you know, the, the street uh, and shaking the town and, and the gown working together to create value, especially where it uh, gives experience, experiential uh, em empowerment to your, to your students. Uh, Prof, why are so many people in the academia not replicating that kind of strategy in their areas of specialization? I I'm just thinking aloud because I know you. And I, I know that, you know, it's not quite fashionable in most of our tertiary institutions for such uh, things to be, to be done. Hello, Prof. Are you there? Okay. Uh, we may have lost. Uh, is that the... Is that this uh, is hanging, uh, uh, Doctor Sumano? Would you? Yes, I can hear you. Would you, perchance, want to uh, give that question a go? Uh, why is it that we have this much brain power? People who are specialists theoretically in subjects and disciplines, and yet those areas of those areas of specializations are areas that could ordinarily gain good market currency in a market of 200 million plus people. And yet many in academia just want to be blowing grammar at us and we don't see the effect of all their knowledge. Well, thank you so much. I'm so happy with that perspective. Honestly, it's the perspective we are trying to let our colleagues, esteemed colleagues, know these days. Of course, there are limiting, there are limiting factors to it. But ideally, there should be a handshake between the town and the gown. In one of our engagements, public engagement, we have coined this to be what is called institutional entrepreneurship. You look at aspect of your research that uh, is marketable. There's no aspect of research that is not marketable. It depends on how you put it across to people. Why I said so is not far-fetched. The universities are an environment where problems, societal problems, are solved. So, in different disciplines, you are thinking, you are researching, you are solving societal problems in that perspective, in those areas. And this is the thinking we want all our colleagues to start imbibing. And we use this medium to call on the government also to appreciate the academia. I've said this time and time again, one is looking like, sounding like a broken record. Any individual, academic, inclusive, can only think globally. You still need to act locally. You can import solutions to problems in outside of our shores, and you want to replicate that, and you think that will solve our problems, there are peculiarities. And our people, our researchers, our universities, university academics, are thinking about our peculiarities and solutions to them. So you have our political elites. They want to have retreats. They want to have some lectures with regards to legislation. They want to have lectures with regards to how to carry out some things in the ministries. And you see them Bring struggling out of the country. 
But bring in expatriates too. Sometimes even they, if they don't travel, yes. they bring, a, bring in expatriates so too. We are not quite I familiar with each other. Problems. We have our peculiarities. Our problems are peculiar to us. Uh, let, let me so, see. Let me see, please. If if prof, prof is back, uh, okay. Would uh, is prof back? Yes, I'm back. I'm back. Sorry for that. Uh, uh, not your fault, prof. Not your fault. Uh, Prof, I, I wouldn't know if you had my question. I said I have had the privilege as an entrepreneur, the, the town, uh, to have engaged a department that you know it uh, for a kind of mutual entrepreneurial uh, engagement that your, even your students benefited from experientially and it was a win-win. We also learned from the observation and the research that your department had carried out. I wonder, I, I, and I'm not saying this to patronize you, I wonder why many of your colleagues are not, represent, are not replicating that strategy with a view to even making themselves relevant and unnecessary the inherent enormous opportunities in this a market of 200 million people plus. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Bola, for your comment and everything. Uh, let me say that all that you said, we're able to do that because of the situation at that time. Now, I'm so happy with what Dr. Somonu mentioned. You need to understand there are so many challenges today. And some of these challenges, whether you like it or not, each of these sectors are having a challenge to do with it. But what you are talking about directly is this idea that has to do with what we are now talking about, the triple helix model. The triple helix model is now a model whereby you have an interaction between the government, the academia, the industry, and the society. As a matter of fact, we can even talk about quadruple helix model, not only the triple helix model, where we talk about having an interaction between the academia and the industry. So what we did that time, because we realized very well on some of the things that we did, because uh, we, our own kind of uh, education is ensuring the real world of work, the real world of work, not just the, the idea of coming up to say that I'm applying for a job, but rather the real world of work of you creating opportunities so that at the end of the day, you become somebody that will now end up becoming an entrepreneur. Now, the challenge we have today is that these disciplines are now being faced with a lot of challenges. Uh, prof, and whether we like it or not, prof, there are I'm, no sectors. Prof, I'm really very sorry. The dictatorship of time is catching up with us. I'm really very sorry. I must say thank you to uh, your two brilliant minds, uh, Professor Samuel Lamande of the Open University of Nigeria and Dr. Sum Nii Sumonu, PhD, the leader. I don't know the title they use at uh, Kanoa. Uh, I don't know the title they use at Kanoa, but it's thank you. national president. National president. Thank you, gentlemen, for being part of this show this evening. And thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Thanks, Prof. Thank you very much for having me, and it's nice having this engagement okay. with you people. I okay. hope that we'll have a better time for our national development. Thank, thank you. you so thank much. you. And that's thank it you. on the show tonight. I am Bola Hoba, and have a good night. <laughs>